Hello, in this video I'm going to show you a useful mechanism that I discovered that we can use to easily interpret the first data sent on the server upon the client connecting. So let's open up this project here. We're going to copy and paste these two controls. I'm going to change the label to username. I'm going to change the text box name to text username. And just reset its default value. Then we're going to go into the client uh, constructor here and set the default value of the username text box to the user's actual username. Environment username. Okay and let's go to the connect callback method where we actually connect to the server and it doesn't matter if you do this before client socket and connect it doesn't really matter um, we're going to call client socket and synchronous send just to keep it simple and before we do this we actually have to make a buffer constructor data so temporary buffer encoding dot ascii dot get bytes to get our bytes from this text username text box text property and um, that's just going to get our username serialize it so we can send it so we're sending our username right as we connect to the server and there's some mechanisms in place with the socket objects that will easily allow us to interpret this first send data so let's go check it out so in the start server method where we have our method call to begin accept we want to specify a size at the start to change the overload so let's uh, do that right now server socket dot receive buffer size you'll notice that it's a valid overload for begin accept and then we're going to scroll down to the accept callback and accept if you take a look at it there's another different overload for it and accept as well and these two overloads go hand in hand. If you have an overload with a buffer specified in one asynchronous method and the other one doesn't have the size or whatever, it's not corresponding, you'll get problems. I'll show you that. Um, so let's create our buffer. Another buffer. Byte array buffer is equal to new buffer. It's going to be empty. So server socket receive buffer size and we're going to use the out keyword pass it into the end accept method and so basically this end accept method is going to block until you receive the initial data so append to text box I'm going to move that up a bit so we can just uh, see what's going on so I'm going to get rid of this client here and we're going to have to um, deserialize this buffer here because it's being set in the end accept method. So string username is equal to encoding dot ASCII dot get string. And we're going to just add that to the text box. It's going to say username has connected when we connect. Okay, so I think that's just about it. Let's try it out. One second, I have to um, uncomment something. Okay, so let's connect with the username Brian Ferguson. And you'll notice that the top says Brian Ferguson has connected. Now let's do a little test here. Let's go down to the client. We're not going to send that data right off the start. And we're going to go break line something in the server. In our accept callback method, we're going to break line right here and that's after the end accept method we're going to connect and you'll notice that the break line hasn't been broken into but as soon as I send some data it will be broken into so I'm going to type and send data and there it is now let's get rid of this accept stuff here so I'm going to get rid of that you can go up top and remove the receive buffer size 
here. So we're using normal uh, begin accept overloads. And we're going to break line into the um, the append to text box line again. And we're going to connect. And you'll notice that right away it raises because n accept returns right away. We're not waiting for that initial data. And that's what I was trying to depict. So I'm just reverting back to what it was. Let's get rid of this first receive buffer size. And I'll show you what happens. As soon as I connect, it's going to tell me that the iasync object was not returned from the corresponding asynchronous method on this class. So these are kind of corresponding begin accept and end accept, except this end accept is expecting data. And if we don't pass in the size of the data that, that we're accepting, it's going to be waiting for data and the iasync result object is going to be a bit different and it's not going to be able to interpret the um, AR data. That's all there is to it. See you later.